Class II Biosafety Cabinet, or BSC, is an important engineering control that provides personnel, product, and environmental protection when working with biohazardous materials. When used properly, a BSC will allow for safe work in a contamination-free environment. However, it is critical that you fully understand how your BSC works and how you should work within the BSC to ensure the safety of yourself and your samples. LabConco biosafety cabinets are carefully constructed to maximize safety, performance, and comfort. Key parts of LabConco BSCs include a solid negative pressure hull constructed of solid stainless steel that contains biohazards, a seamless work surface with coved corners for easy cleaning, a glass sash that directs airflow through the cabinet and protects users from accidental splashes, a powerful yet quiet internal blower which moves air through the BSC, two HEPA filters, one that provides product protection and another that provides environmental protection as the cabinet returns air to the room or exhaust ductwork, and the MyLogic operating system, an intelligent platform that controls the cabinet and informs users of all operating conditions such as airflow speed, alerts, and alarms. A BSC provides personnel protection to protect a user during working operations. Room air is drawn into the front inlet of the cabinet, where it meets contaminated air captured from within the cabinet interior. This air, known as inflow air, is drawn under the work surface and is then recirculated or exhausted from the BSC. Inflow air has a typical velocity of 105 feet per minute. A BSC provides product protection by flowing HEPA-filtered air downward through the cabinet. Downflow air is laminar or unidirectional and is ISO 5 or better in quality. Downflow air may be of different velocities depending on the model of the cabinet, but is typically between 50 and 60 feet per minute. As downflow air nears the cabinet's work surface, the airflow undergoes a phenomenon called smoke split, where a portion of the air flows to rear air slots and the remaining air flows to the front inlet grill. Higher risk activities should take place behind this line for maximum containment. Next, contaminated air captured from the cabinet interior and room is filtered and then recirculated or exhausted to the room. Any contaminants are filtered, providing product protection when recirculated and environmental protection when exhausted out of the cabinet. Although biosafety cabinets are robust containment devices, they must be carefully placed to work properly. Placement should not be in areas of high turbulence, such as near doorways, in hallways, or near return air registers. A BSC should also be installed with six inches of clearance around the top, sides, and back to avoid restriction of airflow entering and exiting the cabinet and to allow for easy cleaning of the exterior. This next section will cover safe operational techniques with your biosafety cabinet. Be sure to follow your organization's biosafety cabinet guidance documents if offered. First, verify that your cabinet has a current certification. The process of certification ensures that cabinet air flows are correct and that the internal filters are free of leaks. A BSC must be certified after installation, then at least once per year thereafter. Biosafety cabinets must also be recertified if they have been moved or if major service has been performed. Contact your lab manager or biosafety officer if the certification has lapsed. Before starting work, secure any loose garments and long hair and remove any jewelry that may interfere with safe operation of the BSC. Next, don appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE. PPE protects you from hazardous materials within the cabinet, but also reduces contamination of your samples from your body. A minimum of a lab coat, safety glasses, and nitrile gloves are typically required. For additional safety, the practice of double gloving can help reduce exposure during and after work. Certain types of work may require additional PPE. Consult with your biosafety officer if you are unsure about any requirements. Next, raise the sash to the proper working height, 
Then turn on the cabinet's light and internal blower and allow the system to equilibrate and purge out any contaminants for a minimum of five minutes. If the cabinet's smart start feature is enabled, the cabinet blower and light will automatically turn on. As the BSC starts up, a please wait screen will be displayed while the blower is equilibrating. Once this period completes, check that the cabinet's HEPA filter life is sufficient and that no other alarms are present. Continue by disinfecting the interior of the BSC. 70% IPA is commonly used. However, select a disinfectant capable of decontaminating the materials you're using within your BSC. When applying disinfectant to the BSC, be sure to allow for the manufacturer's recommended contact time before wiping. As you wipe down the cabinet, work from the top to the bottom. Be careful not to spray the supply HEPA filter as damage may occur requiring replacement. Wipe top to bottom and back to front, overlapping with each pass. Use caution when working with disinfectants that contain chlorine, such as bleach. These solutions may corrode the interior of the BSC, and when used should be followed by a secondary cleaning with 70% IPA. With the BSC prepared for work, you can now place your equipment and samples into the cabinet. Wipe down all materials brought into the BSC with a suitable disinfectant and set up work in an aseptic flow from clean to dirty. Only place your required materials within the cabinet. Overloading may disrupt the cabinet's airflow and create unsafe conditions. Be sure to place materials in the middle of the work surface, taking care not to block airflow grills at the front or rear of the cabinet. The cabinet will alert you of blockages and the cabinet's blower will automatically compensate to maintain safe airflow. However, any blockages should be corrected immediately. Power is available on either side of the biosafety cabinet. These soft closed doors have a flush cover and may be fully disinfected after use. Additional tubing may be run out of the biosafety cabinet through an optional NSF approved negative pressure port. Service fixtures provide vacuum, gas, or liquid to the cabinet interior. Up to two may be added per side. Your biosafety cabinet is a powerful tool designed to keep you and your work safe, but it is not a substitute for proper technique. All work within the cabinet should be pre-planned and movements should be slow and deliberate to minimize airflow disruptions. Good ergonomics promotes safe work. Adjust your chair to a comfortable height, making sure your nose and mouth are above the sash opening. Next, thoroughly disinfect your hands. Enter the cabinet slowly to minimize turbulence and wait one minute before starting any work to allow the cabinet to purge its interior. Labconco BSCs have an integral armrest in the front airfoil, so it is okay to rest your arms on this grill. Be sure to work at least four inches into the cabinet from the front airflow grill. As you work, move slowly and deliberately to avoid turbulence. Containers should be opened with care, keeping the open portion of the vessel in the stream of HEPA-filtered air flowing downward through the cabinet. Only open one item at a time to limit cross-contamination, keeping all other items closed when not in use. Discard all waste in an appropriately marked waste container as you work. Waste should be kept towards the back of the BSC to be contained most effectively. Remember, Anything placed into the BSC, including your hands, must be decontaminated before removing it from the cabinet. The interior mounted display on Labconco cabinets will help you stay informed about your cabinet at all times. If you must exit the BSC in the middle of work, fully disinfect your hands before exiting the biosafety cabinet. Heat sources should never be placed within the biosafety cabinet. Heat creates turbulence within the cabinet and can cause cross-contamination between samples. High heat items such as Bunsen burners may also damage the HEPA filters within the BSC. Instead, use single-use inoculation loops or other low-heat sterilization tools. Never have more than one user per biosafety cabinet. Multiple users working inside the same BSC will disrupt airflows in the cabinet and may lead to cross-contamination or worse, 
loss of personnel protection. If a spill occurs within the cabinet, address it immediately. Leave the BSC's blower running with the sash at operating height while cleaning the spill to ensure that the cabinet contains any aerosols generated during cleanup. Cover the spill with a laboratory wipe to limit spreading within the cabinet. Then apply a suitable disinfectant to the spill and let it sit for the manufacturer's recommended contact time. Wipe up the spill with a disposable lab wiper. After cleanup, wipe the area again along with any other impacted areas. Let the cabinet run for five minutes after any major spill to ensure that all aerosols are filtered out of the cabinet, then safely dispose of any biohazardous wastes. After completing all work, carefully close up any open vessels. Next, wipe down the outside of all materials before carefully removing them from the cabinet. If double gloved, remove the outer pair of gloves, otherwise, disinfect hands before exiting the BSC. Next, decontaminate the interior surfaces of the cabinet. Collect all remaining waste, then seal the bag and spray the exterior to disinfect before removing from the cabinet. Return to the cabinet and perform a final cleaning of all interior surfaces. Wipe in a singular direction, overlapping each wipe to ensure full disinfection of the cabinet. Now that you've completed cleanup, shut the sash before leaving the BSC. Lab Conco BSCs can be programmed to automatically turn on Night Smart, the UV light, or both. Night Smart is an energy efficient mode that purges the work area with clean air between uses. If enabled, the UV light will turn on for a duration that you can select. Caution should be exercised when using UV light for disinfection of the cabinet. UV should never be the primary method of disinfection because of several limitations. UV is not effective against all biohazards. In order to work, the UV light path cannot be obstructed. Additionally, the bulb loses intensity over time and must be replaced regularly. In addition to daily cleaning of the cabinet's visible interior, the sump of the biosafety cabinet should also be cleaned regularly. To access the sump, first disinfect the work surface. Next, raise the work surface and clean the underside before removing. The airfoil may now be cleaned and removed, followed by disinfection of the full cabinet sump. Replace all components after cleaning and perform a second cleaning of the cabinet interior before shutting the sash. Now you're ready to work safely in your biosafety cabinet.